Hello everyone, this is Midor of Sapphire and today in Sapphire interviews we can interview one of the few Twitch partners that are on Cubecraft. This person is named Frostbide and she's a Twitch streamer and today we're going to cover these following questions. How are you? And what do you usually do in Cubecraft? Uh, when did you start playing Cubecraft? As you are a Twitch partner, what more specifically does this mean to you? What good things do you think you can have? What bad things do you think you can have? And if you could fish for one thing in general, what would it be? We also have an extra question in the end of the video. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out. Let's begin. Who are you? Hi guys, I'm Frostbite. I'm a Twitch streamer that plays Cubecraft, Hive, Zekwa, all sorts of fun stuff on Twitch. I have 1.3k followers and I have a large community and love my community. I love interacting with them. What do you usually do on Cubecraft? Usually when I'm streaming on Cubecraft, I play Skywars with my viewers or I play Battle Arena if I'm feeling toxic. Yes. <laughs> when did you start playing Cubecraft? My friend known as Candy Bomb in my community introduced me to the server called Hive, and so I started playing it. And then from Hive, I found out that there's like more servers and stuff, so then I found Cubecraft, and now I've been dedicated to Cubecraft ever since. As you are a Twitch spawner, what more specifically does this mean to you? I think it really helps define the Twitch community side of Cubecraft and the streamers on that side of the content creation corner. Um, it also helps me out with like just being a Cubecraft partner through Twitch. It helps me with like being a Twitch partner. It helps me with hosting parties, events. I get to give away two free giveaways every month. I get to interact with my community in so many ways. Um, I find it very beneficial for me as a content creator to be able to fly around, to join, do, do like private games, all sorts of fun stuff with my community, and it's a great interaction for them. What good things do you think Cubecraft have? Well, I find that like their diversity and how many different types of games there are, all the PvP styles there are. On Cubecraft, I find that really beneficial for a lot of people. Um, like if they're trying to look for something that's more survival-like, they can go to Skyblock, or if they want something more combat-like, they can go to FFA or Sky Wars, or if they want something kind of sweaty, you got Egg Wars, Bed Wars, Bridge, Hit, whatever, all that sorts of stuff, and I find it very diverse in many different aspects. Also another thing about Cubecraft which I really like is all the perks and stuff that you can get with like uh, cosmetics, like you can get all sorts of trails, pets, lobby loot, game loot, uh, cages, all sorts of fun stuff, and I love it honestly, it's so cool. And that not, not many other servers really provide. And I do find that you can really customize your your Cubecraft like, look a lot with all their cosmetics they give. What bad things do you think Cubecraft have? Well, I see Cubecraft has a lot of potential, the, the whole like design of it all, all the games. There's a lot of positives that I love about Cubecraft, it's so unique. However, there are a lot of downsides when you have the biggest Bedrock server on Bedrock, available on Bedrock. And sadly, those downfalls come in all sorts of different forms, from the staff team, to bug glitches, to hackers, the any cheat, the any cheat, all sorts of different things really just can ruin a, a lot of stuff for a lot of players on the server. Um, what I'm most upset about with Cubecraft is the new update when they changed everything. Um, so as a Twitch streamer, I do, I do, um, make most of my money off of Cubecraft, and during the time of the, during the time of the update, uh, I was in, I was unable to work, I was unable to get a job, because I was r stuck in a hospital bed, I was unable to walk, and so because of that, like, you know, my cu my streaming of Cubecraft became my main income of money, and it also helped, like, with my family and stuff. So, like I said, this update that happened kind of has killed a lot about Cubecraft. Um, it has become very evident how much it's ruined the Cubecraft community. It makes us players feel ignored, like what we want isn't the first priority to them. 
Uh, VIP level 30s feel betrayed by the update. OG players who have supported QCraft in many ways for the longest times feel ignored. The server has gone from a fun, happy place with a mutual KB to a messy, unhinged buggy server, unplayable for so many due to the high ping it causes, the lag, and random teleportations to hub. It's become hard for people to play with their friends, parties have trouble queuing, there are a lot of weird glitches everywhere you go. The new maps have just been spammed with the new blocks from the update because it's part of, you know, the Minecraft update. It doesn't even look that nice on the new maps, to be honest. Like, what's the use of it? It just makes everything look kind of, kind of, you know, weird. Uh, for example, Egg Wars. It's basically how to kill entire speedrunning community with an, one update 101 is what they basically created. Um, it's not even an update at this point. It's just made QCraft look really messy. Scrim servers, speedrunning communities, so many people have quit Egg Wars due to how ridiculous the new shop is. It isn't even OP. You die in like two seconds. Before you could last in a 1v3 with a pickaxe as your only weapon, and now you're stuck with diamond armor enemies in two minutes into the game. It's ridiculous. No rhyme or reason. There was no reason to mess with Egg Wars. It was just fine the way it was. And a little bit about myself, which I don't know if this is necessary fully, but how it's, the updates personally affected me. Um is that I was born with a rare birth defect that gives me 24-7 chronic pain in my hips and legs, dozens upon dozens of appointments per month relating to these issues. It makes it unbearable to walk and I often have to use wheelchairs and crutches due to this. I also suffer from things like autism and other learning disabilities. All these things together makes it incredibly hard for me. Now you might wonder why I'm sharing these personal things about myself. Well, due to all these issues, this is why I mostly started streaming in the first place. It was a way for me to escape my chronic pain, make others happy, and to make money, as well as a few personal reasons. You see, I use the money I make from streaming to help save up for college. However, due to in increasing rise in my family's financial issues, most of my money goes to my mom to help pay for things like food and rent. This has been going on for a while, and with that, an increase of streaming hours. I was making plenty of money for my community, really helping things, keeping things afloat for me and my family. However, right after CubeCraft update was put into action, the amount of viewers dropped, especially whenever I played CubeCraft. This drop in viewers has directly affected how much income I, I am now making. It went from several hundred bucks a month down to just over $50. Due to this drop, a few hundred dollars, several things such as my family's water and electricity has been shut off multiple times. This is directly tied to the CubeCraft update. I don't want sympathy, I don't want like any lies to make me happy for the moment, I just want the admins and the staff to understand and listen to how it affects all sorts of different ways in Cubecraft. The whole community, most of the community, hates the update except for mostly like Skyblock community, which loved it. Um, they've added unnecessary things to the maps, uh, ruined game modes. There is always the option to go back and reverse the updates or even like mash them together and to make it a cool new. Part of the update, I see a lot of potential in this update, however, the way that they executed it was just too fast, they didn't hype it up, they're terrible with, like, getting attention to them, they're terrible at media-wise, like, trying to get the word out that they're having an epic update, and I just, I want to support CubeCraft for as long as I can, but I do want CubeCraft to see that, how much it's affected them, and affected the community, and the relationship, I don't know. I personally love Cutecraft, I will always continue playing it, but I just hope that one day Cutecraft can kind of revert the changes better with how it markets. If you could wish for one thing in general, what would it be? So, my dream is to one day start a foundation with something environmental, environmentally based around the ocean, so like near the northwest pacific part of the United States, near Washington, Oregon, Canada, maybe even up towards Alaska, I really want to start like, I want to start a foundation that will help with the gin uh, production of the seawater. I want to help with the acid that's caused, that's beginning in the oceans because of the large amounts of carbon that's being absorbed every year by the oceans. And the biggest way you can combat that is through seagrass, through kelp, through bull kelp, through all sorts of things through nature, and even like down to the, the microorganisms. And something I do want to want to do, which would be my biggest wish, is to be able to go to college and be able to study into those type of like biologies and stuff. So that way then I can start my own foundation, my own business per se, and community, and work on saving the oceans and creating a new habitat 
in a sense, for these endangered species. Oliver Bird whispered that you like Vikings. Is this allegation true? If so, why do you like them? Alright, fine that you ask that, because like right now as we speak, I'm listening to Old Norse in my headphones right now. Um, the, the band is called, it's a really good band. Oh, I just like Vikings because I like the culture, I love how the history, how like women were treated then, how like, I, and, like throughout history, like women were never treated perfectly, but like in the Viking culture, Nordic stuff, women had the opportunity to become warriors, which I thought was really badass and cool. Um, am I supposed to swear? Whoopsie. Anyway, and I just, I, I don't know, I love, I love, I love the area, my family, we are also related to, um, like a lot of like, descendants. I'm a descendant from the culture as well, which I think is kind of cool. Maybe it's like 2% of my blood, but nonetheless, it's still badass, I think, in my head. It's cool. And I, I don't know, I love the music as well. I love the, the folk music, the war stuff, all sorts of things. All sorts of things in it. I love how... All sorts of things. I don't know. Big fan. 10 out of 10. But I like Vikings. Great! Thank you so much for, for watching, and thanks so much for us by it for <laughs> being here. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Here are some clips when we were recording the interview that I thought it was funny. So here are they. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Look at the smile! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this background, like... Just gonna walk in there, it's a dock over there, it's a sign, I just look up and it's just Frostbite just singing. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. A little bird whispered... Did <laughs> you get the saplings in your inventory? This, please. Wait, I just stole the flower! Have you stealing Yeah, look, you can steal it! <laughs> Wait, what? Oh my god, I didn't even know you could steal the flowers from... And the saplings you can also steal. You can like spam them and then you like get a ton. This is pretty cool. That's funny. Yeah.